You know what Clay is good at? Making a good game. You know what Clay is not so good at? Explaining what the hell they just added. That's why I paid Cypham to do the homework for me, so if any information I provide here is wrong, blame this person, not me. So what's the farming like in the constant now? Well, step 1, you craft a rigamajig. Step 2, you use the rigamajig to turn a tile of ground into a tile of ground ground. Step 3, dig up the debris using a shovel. Step 4, craft a hoe and plow that mother nature good. Step 5, plant those seeds you bravely stole from birds. Step 6, craft a watering can. Step 7, fill that can. Step 8, soak the plants now and then. Step 9, talk to the plants. Congratulations, you're now clinically insane. Step 10, reap what you sow and into the pot they go. For those who don't want to babysit a friggin carrot, that's really all there is. Seriously, you can skip the watering and chattering and you'll still get your crops eventually. So all you filthy casuals with something called life, now is your time to leave because this video is about to turn technical. To those who are staying, just know that you're choosing to spend the next 15 minutes learning how to grow a virtual crop. Well then, let's get familiar with stress points, the main mechanic that forces us to care for the fruits and veggies more than we actually do. You see, all crops have different requirements and the more you fail to meet those requirements, the more stress points they'll accumulate. And of course, the less they'll yield. Sounds tough, but it really doesn't take that much to have a relatively successful farm, long as you know how to plant a seed. But if it's the giant crops you are after, that's a whole new story. A story where you must not accumulate more than one goddamn stress point. No pressure. All farm starts with a rigmajig drilling up a tile of land and any fuck up can be dug up using a pitchfork. But it's a shovel that can dig up the debris that will spawn and same can be done to plants you deem unworthy to stay. Then we have the hoes, one made of flint and one made of gold and this literal gold digging hoe can last 4 times longer than a regular hoe. And with that you'll make 9 seats for 9 seeds on a single farm tile. The moment they are planted and every time they grow, each of those seeds need your love and attention, but if you find the process a bit too tedious, facilitate the task using a beefalo horn, a one-man band, or a handful of shell bells. Of course, a narwhal horn, a strident titan, and a pan flute works as well, but if I find you wasting those items on fruits and veggies in my server, pray that I disable PvP. Now, obviously, a plant needs a drink, and that's what a watering can is for. You could fill the can using a water from a pond, an oasis, or a hot spring, but not from the ocean, because that's salt water. Then again, a water pump on boat can use that salt water to wet the plot, so I don't know what the hell is going on. Anyway, it takes 4 drizzle to fully water a plot, and while a watering can can be used 40 times before needing a refill, a waterfall can can be used 160 times. Sounds great, right? Well, try hunting a giant bird in the middle of the ocean and you decide if it's worth it. You could also toss a couple of water balloons, leave pieces of ice, or let the nature do the job for you. I'll tell you more about how often you should water the crops later, but for now, just drizzle them every time they grow bigger. The moment you see those sprouts the time to make the gardener hat, a headgear crucial for those who wish to become the master farmer, while also looking like an absolute lunatic. The moment you put it on, two new interactions will be possible, researching and assessing. Now, assessing can tell whether a crop's requirements are being met, but if you have no information on what type of plant you are growing, there's no way to tell the actual requirement. That specific information can be added by researching every growth state of a plant, storing all the plant's dirty little secrets from birth to burst. Granted that you weren't the worst farmer ever, you'll manage to harvest a seed or two along with your crop. For the moment, the seeds look and sound shady as hell, but the moment you plant it and research it, the names will change into something more familiar. And now that you know what you're growing and what its requirements are, perhaps you could try to get that sweet giant crop. For this guide, I'll be growing a giant potato, a plant that makes my favorite drink. First requirement, seasons. The taters like growing in autumn, winter, and spring, and that's when they grow twice as fast with a chance to grow into a jumbo. Of course, try growing them in summer and it will take much longer and you can kiss goodbye to that Irish trophy. Second requirement, water. 
Obviously, crops like taters with level 1 water consumption would consume less water than crops like tomatoes with level 3 water consumption. But that doesn't mean you should relocate your base to the middle of some amphibian nightmare because a crop only needs to consume water for 10% of current growth state to not be stressed. So, for example, if it takes 10 minutes for a potato to grow from small to medium state, the plot must contain water for at least 1 minute. But here's another annoying factor, evaporation. It occurs naturally depending on the world temperature and while this will not occur in winter, in summer that ground will be bone dried faster than usual. Is this all a bit too technical for you? Then just remember this code, 1211. A plot holding 9 plants must be drizzled once on their seed state, twice on their sprout state, once on their small state and once again on their medium state. Remember that, and you can't ignore what I just blabbered on about the water consumption. Third requirement, nutrients. As you can see, there are three types of nutrients, growth formula, compost, and manure, which are visible on plots if you stick your face into the screen while frying your eyes with blue lights. Here it says, every time a potato grows into its next stage, it'll add one arrow worth of growth formula and one arrow worth of compost, while consuming two arrows worth of manure. Obviously, this manure component will be found in a literal manure guano or a bucket of poop. A not so obvious source of manure component would be a glomer goop or a compost wrap. How can you tell? Well, by pressing your face against that thing. Congratulations, you now look and smell insane. Like plants, fertilizers can be researched as well and the information will be stored under the fertilizer tab. There you'll see what type of nutrient a fertilizer can add and how much it can add as well. Even if a brand new farm plot starts off with 10 arrows worth of each nutrient, the manure component will be sucked dry by these 9 taters. So as for our shit loving crops, rub some rich brown well into the ground to replenish those manure components. By the way, you'll be eating that as well. As for the types of fertilizers, I'm sure you are already familiar with manure, guano, bucket of poop, rot, rotten egg, rotten fish, rotten fish morsel, glomer goop, and compost wrap. But I'm sure you haven't seen these two before, a compost and a starter. A compost is made by mixing three wet items and three dry items in a compost bin. By wet items, I'm talking about food, hambats, garlands, seaweed, and fish foods. And by dry items, I mean grass, twigs, pine cones, twiggy tree nuts, birch nuts, driftwoods, living logs, wooden boards, and ores. So, in short, seeds and cones, people. Seeds and cones. And after some nice churn, the bin will throw up this nutritious vomit every now and then. A growth formula starter is a new type of fertilizer that can be researched four times. When the formula is fresh, when it's stale, when it's nearly spoiled, and when it's completely spoiled. In fact, this completely spoiled growth formula turns into something called super growth formula. Something you should definitely go for since it adds the most formula components and can be used five times while starters in other states can be used only once. But Honestly, the whole fertilizer talk was another waste of time, just me stretching out the video to add more ads. Because as mentioned before, plants do not only take nutrients but also replenish them. So a potato takes 2 arrows worth of manure while replenishing single arrow worth of growth formula and compost. A tomato does the exact opposite, adding 2 arrows worth of manure while taking an arrow worth of growth formula and compost. In short, when planted together, tomato and potato can sustain each other in terms of nutrients without a need for additional fertilizer. In fact, a fellow Don't Starve a Quartz Beam made a whole list of combinations and layouts that take advantage of this mechanism, who lucky for us decided to put a lot more effort in research than this lazy buffoon you're listening to. For those who are interested, the link will be in the description. Just kidding, it's in the comments because no one reads the YouTube description, not even me. Is that all the requirements? Hell no, like I said, Clay sucks at explaining these. Other than those showed in the Gardener hat, there's a bunch more you gotta consider to stop those plants from feeling cranky. Such as number one, burning alive, no shit. It may not have stress points, but it does lead to intending undoing your bidding until the budding combusts into fiery ending. Number two, overcrowding. If you somehow manage to cram more than 10 crops on a single tile, first, teach me how you did that. Second, try and reduce the number of the members on a single farm plot so they can breathe. 
Number three, rotten plants. For plants that eat shit for breakfast, they sure are sensitive when other plants start to smell funny. Unlike previous farm plots, crops cannot stay ripened forever. Sure, the rotten crop will eventually revert back to the initial growth state, but long as it's there being ugly and smelly, it will be quite unpleasant for the other plants. Number four, debris. Obviously, why would you not get rid of these? Number five, lack of familiar faces. Just have four of the same kind within one tile radius. They don't have to be on the same plot, just nearby would suffice. Number six, weeds and yes, the fun ones. If you're farming with random seeds you find in nature, there is a chance that the seed won't feed but become a weed. A pesky plant that has stress points, depletes nutrients and plants even more weeds. Forget me lots is the most common weed and it's hard to forget it when it's so goddamn annoying. It makes the other crops rot faster and even after digging it out, you may see that bugger again in 2 or 5 days unless there are already 3 of them within 3 tiles radius. Still, by adding honey, ice and a filler like berries, forget me lots can turn from irritating to invigorating by generating sanity as a soothing tea. Fire nettle is another common weed that will try to warm up to you to the point it gets tad uncomfortable. Touch it, eat it, or stand close to it and you'll feel as warm as a toast and then turn into ghost. Tillweed is more rare plant that screws up the plot by sticking up those rocky middle fingers in your face. So mix it with petals and charcoal to turn it into a healing item which generates health over time. And finally, we have spiny bindweed, a rare but nasty one. While it doesn't spread, if you try to harvest a crop or stand by a rotten crop, the bindweed can bind you until you break through, unless you're a wormwood who smells like a poo, or riding a cow that never says moo. Right, so after taking care of all the taters tatery needs and getting rid of all problems, you have finally raised a giant potato, hallelujah. This big boy can last 4 times longer than the small ones and hammering it will drop 2 to 3 crops and 2 to 3 seeds, oh the joy. So is it finally time to sit down and enjoy your hard earned gold nugget? Fuck no. Remember, this is Don't Starve, Not Stardew Valley. Picking a rotten crop has 5% chance to summon a fruit fly, or 2 if you're harvesting a giant rotten crop. These pests will pester any crops in the area, undoing all the love and effort you put into them. Then plant weeds wherever possible right before nipping like a mosquito. You think that's bad? Well then, you'll love the lord of the fruit flies. While you won't see this big mama for the first 35 days, any rotten crops could bring this possible rendezvous a half a day closer. To actually summon the lord, a crop must be rotten and must be within a tile and a half distance from 15 other crops. To punish you for your poor farming skill, the lord brings its own four horsemen and wrecks havoc like a normal fruit fly would, except this one bites harder and won't exactly drop like a fly. When killed though, the lord of the fruit flies will drop some leafy meat and a fruit fly fruit, which like a chester eye bone, will summon a friendly fruit fly that will help you tend the gardens within 5 tiles radius. Ain't that adorable? Well if not, killing it is quite easy. By the way, if you kill the lord with a friendly fruit fly already in the world, instead of another fruit fly fruit, it will draw 4 to 8 seeds that will grow crops suited for the current season. So, are there any other stuff you ought to know? Number 1, a bird in a bird cage will always yield one seed when you feed a crop and although it can now eat raw monster meat, it won't take its fetus to produce a new one. Number 2, Premier Gardener Hat is an ancient tab craftable which is an upgraded version of a Gardener Hat. Unlike Gardener Hat that could only tell you whether the plant is happy or not, Premier Gardener Hat can tell you what specifically upsets the plant, be it a lack of affection, loneliness, weeds, and so on. It could also help you better see which nutrients are present on the plot without damaging your eyesight. Number 3, Seed Packet is a 14 slots backpack which holds seeds only, including those from trees. Still, if you already have a 15 slots spectacular box from Pearl, that could be a better alternative, although it cannot hold any tree seeds. Number 4, Produce Scale is like Fish Scale, which means it's useless. Number 5, Wicker Bottoms Applied Horticulture has been replaced by following two books, Horticulture Abridged and Applied Silviculture. Horticulture abridged affects only 10 plants and those plants must produce edible resources such as crops, berries and stone fruits. 
Also, don't expect any giant crop using this cheap tactic. Applied silviculture acts just like the old applied horticulture book, but only works for non-edible plants such as trees, grass saplings, and so on. Number 6. Wes cannot talk to the plants, and we thought he cannot get any more worthless. Number 7. Disease is no longer a thing, so no need to turn that off when you create a new world. Number 8. Bunny Man now has different chance to drop each item. Not sure what's this got to do with farming, but a change is a change. Number 9. Plants will now stay fresh longer when placed on the end table, and will also take forget me lots and loon tree blossoms. Number 10. Now Wormwood went through a lot of changes, so much that I am forced to make a whole new Wormwood guide, a work which I will hate and procrastinate a lot because I already made two videos on that bastard and I am starting to see why he has no friends. And that is pretty much everything you need to know regarding farming in the constant now. At least I hope that's it because this was one hell of a video to make. If they make any changes right after this video is posted, I'll start drinking again, but we'll try to make a new video. Thank you Cypher for providing necessary information and taking all the blame in case they are wrong. And thank you Quartzbeam for allowing me to share your research as well. Again, the link is in the comments, so do check it out. With that being said, cheers.